Hi, my name is Tram Lin, and I'm currently a P1 Pharmacy student at UConn School of Pharmacy. Hi, my name is Nisa Yvalik, and I'm currently a junior nursing student at the UConn School of Nursing. Our presentation today is on medication errors. These are the points we are going to be covering in our presentation. The first point we are going to discuss is what is a medication error. Then we are going to go on and examine the history of it. Next, we will understand the root causes and describe the importance of reducing these root causes. Finally, we will explain the importance of patient education to help minimize medication errors. So what are medication errors? A medication error is any preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use or patient harm where the medication is in the control of the healthcare professional, patient, or consumer. This is the definition given by the National Coordinating Council for Medication Error and Prevention, NCCMERP. A variety of different events can be considered medication errors, and they can be related to professional practice, healthcare products, procedures, and systems. Medication errors can occur during prescribing, order communication, product labeling, packaging, compounding, dispensing, distribution, administration, education, monitoring, and use. Medication errors have been a problem for many decades. The first reports of medication errors were in the 1940s, and this was when hospitals first began to keep records of these errors. However, not much was done about these errors until 1999. In 1999, the Institute of Medication released the landmark report called to Errors Human, which reported the high prevalence of medication errors, and this report was what led to increased awareness of medication errors. The report also mentioned that medication errors are not due to incompetent healthcare professionals, but rather a faulty system which failed to prevent errors. There have been advancements in the past 20 or so years to decrease medication errors with the development of new technology and better healthcare practices, but the prevalence of medication errors is still very high today. In the future, there needs to be greater reduction in medication errors with increased vigilance and more advanced technology to ensure better patient safety and medication efficacy. How did medication errors occur during World War II and what impact did it make for the future of medicine? A very important topic that has to be mentioned here are blood transfusions. Soldiers would have their blood type written on dog tags. However, what is important to note that happened during this time is how blood types were determined. The medical officer, Samuel Berg, would determine blood types on a piece of paper with the slide placed above it on a truck floor in the dark and poor weather conditions. Many blood typing errors occurred because they had to be done fast and in these conditions. Not to mention, they could not even add saline to the reaction to prevent it from drying, so the results inevitably altered after seeing them. However, he would have to get through hundreds a day. A notable point he made was that he had to read 9,000 reactions in 28 days. Some days he could have as little as 152 blood types, while other days he could have as much as 1,200. And these blood types were only documented on the side of the blood typing, which were thrown out later. So there was no official documentation, even if the soldier lost their dog tag. Another important topic during World War II was the use of antibiotics, specifically penicillin. Penicillin was widely given to treat infections. However, dosages were not considered, which led to death. For example, one man died from his infection because he was not given a large enough dose of penicillin to kill the whole infection. On the other hand, vaccines were also of concern. At one point, hepatitis cases rose once armies were vaccinated. The vaccine was created through the use of human blood serum obtained from a standard pool of blood donors. The blood was heated to kill off any viruses, but it did not kill off enough because some vaccine-specific lots were contaminated and spread infection, which was the hepatitis-like symptoms. Later, it came to awareness that the individuals were infected because of the blood donors, but there was no documentation to tell them that the donor's blood was fine. Finally, it's important to note the advancement World War II created, and that was the ENIAC, or also known as the first computer. This computer was able to perform thousands of calculations. It helped calculate dosages for medications, which was a game changer to medicine, since now we have computers to chart and take medications out of. Due to the results of medication errors in World War II, it has risen awareness to mitigate any long-term effects in the healthcare system. Some of the most common medication errors include errors with ordering and prescribing, such as ordering the wrong medication, the wrong dose, or the wrong frequency. Another frequent error occurs when the medication is being dispensed because many medications have been given to the wrong patient. 
Medication errors also occur with a lack of monitoring because allergies, drug-to-drug -drug interactions, and lack of organ function may not be taken into consideration when a medication is being prescribed or dispensed. It is important to reduce medication errors because medication errors are the most common patient safety error. Medication errors are also the eighth leading cause of death in the U.S. and cause at least one death every day. Medication errors can cause patient harm and even result in death of a patient, as mentioned previously. Both of these situations should never occur over an event that is preventable. One case of a medication error that has led to a fatality is a case involving the wrong medication. A, pe a patient was given pegfilgastrum, which is dosed weekly, instead of filgastrum, which is dosed daily. The patient was given 11 doses of pegfilgastrum and ended up dying due to acute toxicity. Emily Jerry was a four-year-old with a yolk sac tumor in her abdomen. <clears throat> she was diagnosed at the age of one and a half and had years of surgery and chemotherapy sessions. Her chemo was successful and showed no signs of cancer from her MRI results. <clears throat> she had one last chemo session she had to do. The day Emily was given chemo, she fell asleep and woke up out of character, screaming that her head hurt so much and profusely vomiting. Her mother called a healthcare team and Emily became unconscious. The providers had to resuscitate her and put her on life support so that they could perform a CT scan and other tests. However, it was too late and Emily passed away from being brain dead. This was all due to a medication error, which was an overdose of sodium chloride in her chemo IV bag. The pharmacy technician for this patient created a concentrated sodium chloride solution of 23.4%. Now she compounded herself instead of the standard, instead of the standard compounded chloride solution of less than 1%. I'm sorry, the standard sodium chloride solution of less than 1%. The tech said she felt like something was not right, but she was not sure. It's important in these situations to trust your gut and not send the medication and have someone double check your work. Many medication errors have occurred due to poor documentation. There has been a switch from paper records and documentation to electronic records and documentation in recent years. Both forms of documentation have advantages and disadvantages. First, let's talk about paper records. Paper records are advantageous to the, due to the fact that they are time efficient because there is no need to wait for files to load or to look for passwords. This is especially important when, there, when it is an emergency and time is of the essence. Paper records can also be accessed and utilized even when the internet is down and they are less expensive than electronic records. The problem with paper records are the fact that at times, handwriting may not be legible, which can lead to different which can lead to the different medication errors mentioned earlier. There is also a lack of organization when it comes to paper records as they can easily be misplaced or lost. Digital records, on the other hand, store all of the information in one place and so all of the information is centralized in the electronic health record and easy to access. Digital records systems also improve efficacy and patient safety because the system will flag and alert providers if potential issues are found. Digital systems also include additional services such as barcode scanners, which help reduce medication errors by ensuring that the medication being given is actually meant for that patient. However, there are also disadvantages with digital systems, such as typing errors, because an additional letter or lack of a letter can be an entirely different medication. There is also a reduction in vigilance with digital systems because people start to rely on the fact that the system will alert them of any errors both systems are beneficial to healthcare professionals as long as they are aware of the disadvantages and stay vigilant to ensure that no errors are made. <clears throat> Apixis is a computer that contains most medications you would need for a patient. Pharmacy is the one that fills the Pixis. So how the Pixis works is you have to log in with your credentials and then scan your finger. Then a patient list will pop up and you have to search for your patient and all their prescribed medications will be under their name. You can click on which medication you need and it will take you through some steps that then will proceed to open the drawers for you with that specific drug slot being opened. It's important that you check if the right drug is in the right slot. And if it's not, put it back and call the pharmacy to fix it. It is especially important in instances when you have opioids to make sure that the right amount is in there. The Pixis will ask you how many vials were in the slot before and then how many are there left after you have taken one out. This has to be verified with another nurse especially because you have to waste the opioid in a special bin and note how much was wasted in the Pixis. An important story that I want to talk about that is highly prevalent today in regards to medication errors is about Redonda Vought, 
who was an ICU nurse at Vanderbilt. She gave vecuronium, a paralytic, instead of Versed, a sedative, to a patient that needed to go to PET scan. Redonda had to override the medication because of Vanderbilt's technical errors that were occurring that said warning for every medication, even a bag of fluids. However, she failed to look at what medication she was typing into the Pixis to override, and she did not look at the vial before giving it to the patient. She typed in VE and picked the first one she saw. However, in the Pixis, it starts off with generalized names. So Versed is actually midazolam. All paralytics have a warning sign on top of it, but Redonda did not check. This resulted in the death of the patient. That is why it is important to triple check your medications. Errors like this can happen to anyone, but they are highly preventable if we take the time to cross-reference and know the five rights of medication administration, which I will talk about in a later slide. I highly recommend you read more into this case since it is an interesting story and it will inevitably determine the future of nursing. Every time a medication is given, the nurse has to ask the patient if they have any allergies. As a patient, it is vital to tell your healthcare providers about any adverse reactions you have to drugs so that they can add it to your medical record. There may be some on there that the facility put down based on how you reacted to a drug, but there could be some you take at home or were prescribed that gave you a bad side effect that are not written in the medical record. It's important to note that no matter how mild a side effect is, if a person says they're allergic to the drug, there's no reason to be frustrated by the remark. The point of healthcare is to help the patient to the best we can. And if they decline, that is their wish and we have to respect it. In addition, it is important for the nurse to look at the provider's orders and make sure the medication is safe for the patient. Cross reference to side effects, contraindications and allergies this patient has. If the provider orders a medication and the patient is allergic to it, you have to call the provider to change the medication. A great tool that's used today is allergy wristbands. They're helpful as they are right next to the patient's ID wristband. When you give a patient a medication, you have to scan the ID band before giving it, thus warning you and reminding you that this patient has an allergy. So the five rights of medications. When nurses have to give medication, they have to remember these five rights before they administer any medication. First, we start off with the right patient. We have to make sure that when we take out that medication and go to that patient's room, that that medication is for that patient and no one else. Then we have to consider the right drug. When you are taking out the drug from the Pixis, you have to read that label. Make sure that the drug is in the right slot and make sure that is the medication that you need. Next, the right time is important. We do not wanna give medications too early, especially because there are certain parameters with certain drugs. For example, if Tylenol can be given every six hours as needed, we cannot give one dose at 10 and then another dose at one because the patient needs it. It has not been six hours yet. Another right that we have to consider is the right dose. Many times the provider or pharmacy can calculate or put in orders incorrectly. Check that the dosage is correct and safe for the patient as the nurse. Not to mention, double check when you grab the medication and make sure you have the right amount too. Finally, the last right is the right route. We want to make sure that we're not giving medication through a route that's not intended. For example, if a patient has an order for an oral medication that needs to be put through an NG tube, we're not going to give it to them by mouth. There are different onsets for drugs based upon the route, and if we need a drug to act fast, we are not going to give the route that takes the longest for onset. So I'm going to explain this slide from the periphery to within. So no matter whom a medication is with, that individual has to know the five rights, like I mentioned in the previous slide, not just the nurse. So if a doctor is placing an order, he has to think about that patient and the relevance of that drug to them. Then when it is sent over to the pharmacy, the pharmacist has to know if this drug truly is safe for the patient. And if it is not, tell the provider. Finally, once we get to the nurse, the last person that will be handling the drug, they have to make sure that pharmacy and the provider did not make a mistake in the order. And if they did, contact them and do not report it or give it until it is fixed. And then they have to consider the five rights when administering. However, medication errors can happen. You have to know where to report. First and foremost, an incident report has to be made with risk management. Then the provider and nurse have to go to the patient and explain the medication error. Now, the ones I've listed below, MedWatch and VAERS, they are national reporting systems. MedWatch is a system that healthcare professionals can voluntarily report adverse or sensible events to, whereas VAERS is a system that healthcare professionals are mandated to report certain adverse events for vaccines. Both of these systems help the CDC and FDA determine if there are safety concerns and how they should be addressed to reduce incidents. 
Opioid medication errors are a very common medication error and they can lead to overdose in a patient. This also increases the risk of opioid dependence in the patient as opioids are also given on and as needed for pain basis. The most common opi opioids given are morph morphine, codeine, and hydromorphone. The most common errors were administrative such as ordering or giving the wrong dose of the medication or giving the medication in the wrong route. The graph on the left shows that of the 10,000 medication malpractice cases in 2016, 12 to th through 2016, 24% of the closed cases were in regards to opioids and errors in an administration or monitoring and management of opioids. Due to the opioid epidemic that is currently ongoing, it is very important that healthcare providers triple check medications such as opioids due to the high dependency and abuse rate. So medication reconciliation. Medication reconciliation is the process of comparing a patient's prescribed medications to the medications that they are taking to create a complete and accurate list of the patient's current medications. If we know they're prescribed and over-the-counter medications, then we are able to ensure greater patient safety as the healthcare professional is able to check that there aren't going to be any, any negative drug-to-drug -drug interactions or contraindications with the medications that they will be taking. A complete and accurate medication reconciliation record will help ensure that medication errors are reduced. However, most people do not have a complete and accurate medication reconciliation record, and so it is very important for the provider to ask and try to obtain as complete, as complete a record as possible to limit any potential medication errors. Health literacy is the ability an individual has to obtain, process, and understand basic health information and services needed to make appropriate health decisions. A low health literacy correlates to higher incidence of medication errors, and a high health literacy correlates to a lower incidence of medication errors. With low health literacy, it is easier for patients to take the wrong dose of medications, whether they are prescribed or over-the-counter, as they may not be able to read or understand what their dosing regimen is, and so they may take too much of the medication, which can cause toxicity and harm to the patient. If a patient doesn't understand or has any questions about their medications, they should ask the pharmacist or healthcare professional to ensure that the medication is correct and that they know how to take it to ensure patient safety. Patients can also help decrease the occurrence of medication errors because it is not just up to the um, healthcare professionals. Patients should know the names of the medications they are taking as well as what they are taking them for. Whenever you start to educate a patient on a new or current medication, it is important to have an information sheet about the medication present as well as verbally discuss each point on the paper since everyone learns different learns and processes information differently. It is better to provide multiple methods of learning. To ensure that the patient understands their medications, have them repeat back two to three points that they consider the most important, such as some of the ones listed on this slide. Also make sure to ask if the patient has any questions or concerns. Overall, we've improved as a society by preventing, assessing, and reporting medication errors. However, medication errors are still present today, and it's important that we continue to educate ourselves as healthcare workers and even the patients too, to make sure that we triple check every medication and report errors if need be. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation, and we hope you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at the emails listed below. Mm -hmm. Thank you.